We need to focus on getting America back in action. No more lockdowns, no more shutdowns, get things reopened. But as we reopen and as we also come back from even more chaos and destruction and trials and tribulations to small businesses across the country, medium and large businesses too, now from the riots sweeping across the country. What do we need to do in order to reinvigorate small businesses across America? And what about liability from coronavirus issues? We'll talk about that with the president and CEO of the Job Creators Network, Alfredo Ortiz, who rejoins us here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. Alfredo, sir, welcome back to the show. Jimmy, hello. Uh, nice to see you again. I hope all is well with you. Personally, I'm doing well. I just feel for our country right now, and I want to start there. Small businesses in particular, Alfredo, have been struck hard by the pandemic and these government yeah. shutdowns of the economy. And now many across the country, we'll talk to one in the next segment, are just being devastated by these riots. What are your thoughts on Jimmy, this Monday it's, morning? It's, it, yeah, it's, it's just a sad state of affairs right now. We've moved from quarantine to curfew now. Um, and our small business owners are really, really uh, hurting. Um, I, I, I think many of us have probably seen some of the reports and interviews. Small business owner, I think, in the heart of it in Minneapolis was all geared up, ready to open June 1st today, had everything ready to go, and uh, their business was torched. Um, really, really sad, uh, you know, uh, interview and just hearing that. But really, the impact is still so broad from the COVID crisis that adding this on top of it is just, you know, it's just so tough from a societal standpoint. But, you know, Jimmy, if we take a step back and we think, you know, as a society, we've been shut down for 10 weeks. And that was one of the things we did a couple weeks ago. And we took an open letter out addressing Dr. Fauci on this is about you know getting that second opinion basically in terms of the shutdown because this is what we were concerned about right it was almost basically a tempest in a teapot because yes. when you have society shut down the way it was and 41 million unemployed people and really you, you know it looks like it's going to continue to get worse to the point where we're going to have 20 percent unemployment if we're not there already you know it, we have to make that tough choice and we have to be move, be able to move forward safely um, but but still move forward in, in, in an expedited fashion across the country. And I know there are a lot of counties that are still extending the, the you know, the, the, these quarantine uh, periods. And I have to tell you, small business owners, I mean, Jimmy, if, if, if Pelosi or AOC or Chuck Schumer were only be, you know, to be on some of these phone calls that I'm receiving, Jimmy, and text, mm. you know, p people who I've, you know, frankly, in some cases are friends of mine for, for, for years, in tears over the loss of their business, literally out of no fault of their own, overnight, their livelihoods are gone, the livelihoods of their employees are gone. Um, I was a small business owner myself. I didn't have a lot of employees, I only had a few employees. But I have to tell you, Jimmy, whenever something happens to you that impacts your employees, it really, really hurts. And, and seeing this all happen, and now, of course, unfortunately, you've got what's been going on over the past five days on top of the COVID issues, uh, boy, Jimmy, th this is this is about as, as rough as it can get for our small business owners across the country. I think that's well put. And it is a very sad state of affairs, Alfredo Ortiz. And so as we look at at the current crisis now compounded upon the crisis we've been dealing with, that is to say the riots on top of the pandemic. Yeah. One thing that strikes me is that they're guaranteed there are small business owners who left their businesses because of the pandemic requirements and left them unattended. And then suddenly, next thing they know, hey, it's torn down or it's busted open. And they haven't been there. Yeah. They weren't able to do anything to sort of uh, act. Not that they could have predicted this kind of thing, but maybe they would have been able to, to be more readily able to get back into their business and get things taken care of at the, at the first sign of this kind of thing. It's just devastating when you put it all together. And your Tempest in the Teapot point is exactly the one that I've been making, which is that for months people have been cooped up in their homes, told you just have yeah. to wait and trust us. And then last week we saw one, one authority figure, not representing the vast majority of police, but one authority figure with three others standing by taking somebody's life. 
and it was just the spark that lit the flame, it seems. Yeah, yeah, it really was, uh, Jimmy, you know, and, and I have to tell you, you know, just watching that on TV, uh, uh, just really horrible, horrific, you know, and, and the saddest part about all of this is I think as, as, as America, I think we're all in violent agreement that what we saw was, 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 uh, was horrible and, and, and wasn't right. And I think we're all in agreement that those kinds of issues need to be addressed um, you know, but, but, but it's now the simultaneous, uh, uh, basically addressing the need of these two separate issues, right? Where you, again, we have 41 million unemployed people. It's going to probably continue to climb. I wouldn't be surprised, Jimmy, if we see, you know, 45, 46, 47 million unemployed people. Um, the, the all, we need to get folks back to work. Um, you know, again, if, if you go back to the letter that we put in the wall street journal a couple of weeks ago, it was an open letter to Fauci. Again, these are the unintended consequences that we were very concerned about. Domestic violence, uh, drug abuse, depression. Uh, just the other day, I saw a fact, Express Scripts, one of the largest uh, pharmacy benefit managers uh, out there in our country, um, has seen a 38% increase in, in antidepressants. 38%. I mean, we're, Express Scripts is an enormous, enormous uh, pharmacy benefit manager. So we're probably talking millions of people. I haven't done the calculation, but that's probably millions of people, uh, Jimmy. How many of those people, uh, unfortunately and sadly, are going to take their own lives, right? I mean, and th this is a reality. Um, uh, I, I just saw something the other day, an estimate of, on, on that, um, that, that it could be 90 to 120,000 people this year alone that due to unemployment take their own lives. Um, these, this is, this is about, again, Jimmy, about as real as it gets. And, and again, we're, we're trying to be as respectful as possible in, in terms of the folks and the experts and Dr. Fauci's done a tremendous thing for our country you, overall, but, but we're saying, yeah, we, we gotta, we no, gotta look at the other side of so, this now. So let's get to some specifics. Again, we're talking with Alfredo Ortiz, president and CEO of the Job Creators Network. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we need to do? We'll get to liability in a moment, but as far as helping sure. businesses to get back on their feet, I mean, I'm not a fan of a, another massive multi-trillion dollar stimulus package. I think the key is to get things reopening, as you're talking about, but also That's right. uh, there are some other steps that could be taken to help provide some greater capacity for small businesses especially, but also medium and large businesses to get back in the game. What are some of the things that you sure. think are needed now at this point, Alfredo? Well, you know, one of the things that we, we, we uh, just wrote uh, an opinion editorial on is liability protection. And it's not a blanket immunity, and I want to make sure that's very clear. Um, obviously, if you have complete disregard of people's health, and whether it's an employee or a customer and you're putting people in harm's way, that, the, you know, the, the ability to, to take your know, recourse against, uh, you know, um, bad elements like that, I think, are, are, are necessary and we need to keep in place. You know, I'm talking kind of a, a limited liability protection where whether you're a small, medium, or large business, or maybe a school or a camp, right? If you follow all the guidelines provided, whether it's from county health officials or state health officials, or from um, uh, you, you know uh, f federal health officials, I mean, um, you know, CDC has provided industry by industry, I think, at this point, uh, safeguards and guidelines. If you follow these to the T and do the best possible and provide all the proper uh, PPE uh, equipment and, you know, face masks, and something happens, right? Um, you, you shouldn't be held liable. And there are a lot of small businesses that are concerned that they are going to be held liable and that they can be sued by whether they're employees or their customers. If for some reason, uh, out of really no fault of their own, they do contract uh, a COVID. Um, and, and they're very concerned about that. And they don't have the resources to hire attorneys and you know to represent themselves, uh, you know to represent them uh, against those kinds of frivolous lawsuits. So that's the kind of stuff we're really concerned about. And we're advocating for that kind of limited liability protection. So that's a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is in terms of kind of financial, uh, from a financial perspective, we were excited to see what the House passed uh, uh, last week, uh, pretty much unanimous. Um, from that perspective, those were fixes to the Paycheck Protection Program. Jamie, we all know it wasn't perfect, but when you take the step back and you look, a $650 billion lending facility really put together in a matter of weeks, the first one, 500 plus billion, put together in a matter of six days. Um, you know, it's estimated right now that about 50 to 55 million people 
have been able to keep their jobs because of that. Was it perfect? No. But again, given the speed at which something so massive was put in place uh, by the government, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad that it was done. And, I'm, and again, I'm glad the fixes uh, are in place. I believe the Senate will be taking that up uh, this week. Um, and then I know that they're going to be having discussions of phase four after that. There's a lot of Christmas tree favorites of Pelosi that are on that phase four uh, stimulus on her mind there and that I'm sure are going to you know, try to sneak their way into the bill. But right now, we do need to make those fixes on the triple P that the House passed last week. Um, and then I think um, one thing that I would say, and it's not as, it doesn't sound as glorious and, and as fancy, but I think it have a tremendous impact, and I'm seeing this across the country, local municipalities and local governments. If you can continue to provide flexibility to these small business owners, especially restaurants, which you know have been extremely hurt, um, to be able to provide dining outside, um, you know where possible, you know a lot of restrictions from a lot of different municipalities would prevent that right now. And I'm seeing a lot of that easing up of regulations. We need to have regulations dropped as much as possible. Again, make sure safety is you know kept in place. But to the extent that you can provide uh, uh, you know, flexibility to all the small business owners out there on some of these regulations, uh, you know, for example, on dining and stuff like that, that is really actually going to help these small business owners a lot. Wow. I'm excited. Yeah. You know, whenever possible, I try to frequent you know, a, a, a restaurant and sit outside. And it's a beautiful thing to enjoy that vitamin D. Well, for sure. But also, I think that what we're seeing now across the country is demonstration that you can't keep people from being able to live their lives any longer. And that, that I think, yeah. is a demonstration that uh, that is abundantly clear, at least, that this rioting and what we're seeing across the country is a demonstration yeah, of that, you know, too. Jimmy, I, re I, I, I referenced the letter we put, we, we put yep. forth you know, to, to Dr. Fauci. You know, the, really, uh, folks have been try had been trying to position this as it's it's life versus the economy, right? I mean, you know, false it's, dichotomy, it's, 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 right? False dichotomy. You got to choose one or the other. We position it as it's life versus life, and I really think this is what we're seeing. People are just saying, "I need to be able to live my life," right? I mean, I think that's when I said kind of the the, the the tempest in a teapot. I think that's what we're seeing, and this unfortunate incident, sad incident that happened. Um, uh, you know, with Mr. Floyd, with just you know, really, really was the fuse. I think that really, that really, uh, un unfortunately, was needed to make everything blow up the way it has been. You know, I pray that as a country, we all get together and we're able to have uh, discussions around things that are serious in nature. Obviously, fixes that have to be, you know, be helped in in, in our in our, uh, uh, you know, in our in our police systems. Um, but again, you know, also my hats to to the police because while we were seeing all the riot and looting, in many cases people were saying, "Where were the police?" I really think police understood that you know personal safety really was paramount uh, and their number one priority versus property. Property can always be replaced by insurance and stuff like that. People's lives can't. And um, so again, we need to understand that that this is a country that's hurting, and we need to be able to heal as a country. Wow. Both from the COVID and now from this. Uh, at, at the same time, and we'll talk with one small business owner in Raleigh, North Carolina, in the next segment. He was there trying to stand by his business, had private security come in, was like, where are the police? People were there trying to defend their businesses. So lives yeah. were, were, were at risk. But your point is, is, is certainly uh, well taken, Alfredo Ortiz. And, and I agree with you that we need to be recognizing that our police officers are doing so much to protect us during this time and the vast majority the vast vast majority are good people trying to keep the peace and protect life to serve and protect that is their objective now i want to talk yeah. about uh, two two other things well actually i want to expand on the liability protection again in a moment with a question but first um Payroll tax cut. We've heard that being talked about, floated by right. Trump administration officials and by others. What's your sense for that? Yeah, so, so thank you. Um, I appreciate that. that. was a perfect leading. That was one of my other uh, last points here. The payroll tax, something we've actually been talking about almost since day one, since the shutdown. We really believe that this is something that we can put forth, and we can be very surgical about this. Um, if we, for example, what we're uh, recommending and promoting on this one, the idea is Let's do a payroll tax cut for both the employer and the employee of all businesses that are 100 employees or under. Um, so that means that we really are focused on, on, on those particular businesses, not, not the largest of businesses. 
And you know what, Jimmy, that actually would cover about 98.5% of small businesses. So we really believe that that would be something that if we can implement it surgical, there should be really no reason why uh, either side should have an issue with that. Um, I think both sides, I think, could be as supportive uh, as they were on the, um, the, the bill that passed last week almost unanimously. Um, I think that's something that can happen. And I tell you, for those, you know, the 1099s of self-employed that have to pick up both sides of that, of that 15% tax, right? Because usually, if you're an employee, it gets split between the employer and the employee, 7.5% each. For if you're an independent contractor, 1099, you're paying both sides of that. This would allow... Uh, uh, you know, for that 15% to remain in your pocket and would be a huge, huge opportunity for, the, for, for, the, for those folks. Yeah, I agree. Now, I would like to see it expanded to cover the whole economy in terms of the payroll tax cut, but the narrowly <laughs> tailored sort of, as you say, surgical approach that you're suggesting with 100 or fewer employees makes abundant sense as a minimum uh, way to go about it because, as you're saying, it would affect 98 0.5% of small businesses across the country and would have a tremendously positive impact in that way. So at a minimum, I, I, I'm entirely on board with what you're suggesting there. Yeah, now, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 Jimmy, I like moving the football a little bit at a time sometimes. So, cause, Fair uh, enough. I Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you for sure, for sure. Uh, let me ask you one more topic. I mean, you talked about this already before. Alfredo Ortiz, again, president and CEO of the Job Creators Network, the uh, liability protection idea. Just two particular questions. You, you, one, you made some clarification about how this wouldn't cover everything and there would be some particular instances where you would have liability protection as, as business owners. Can you expand upon that a, a little bit as to what would not be covered under this proposed liability protection? Because I think there are a lot of people like, whoa, you just want to cut businesses an entire amount of slack. You want them off the hook even when you can directly tie and say they did something wrong, this and that. So I think that's important to just kind of go over one more time. Sure. And then also, is it something that needs to be done at the federal level or at the various state levels? How are you looking at that approach, Alfred? You know, that's an excellent point. I know we've been talking a lot about this at federal level, but, but my thinking is, is that I think we can get attorney generals and governors to cover this at state level. My thinking is that this is something that can be done at that, at that, from, from that perspective, and we don't have to wait for the federal government on this one. Um, I encourage and urge all governors and attorney generals to really consider this specifically when it comes to COVID so, and specifically when businesses are doing their best. Look, none of us saw this coming. None of us knew what it was just three months ago. And the fact that businesses are trying to open up now, first of all, we know that needs to happen uh, safely, um, but, but smartly. And when you at least then follow these guidelines that are being provided, again, whether it's county health officials, state health officials, federal with CDC or, or NIH, um, anybody that's given those guidance, and again, uh, basically an industry guidebook has been issued by the CDC. If you follow those to a T and do the best you can, <clears throat> that's what we're talking about. So it's a, it's a limited... Uh, immunity, not a blanket immunity, but a limited liability protection for these small businesses, again, because they are fearful. And I have to tell you, they ha do not have the resources. I mean, just think about how much now they need to expend, for example, on buying all the PPP, excuse me, the PPE equipment, the personal protection equipment. I mean, these, these are real numbers. And even the ramp up, I mean, I've got, again, friends who, who run restaurants, and they said, we don't have produce lying around from three months ago. Um, we have to go out and buy all this stuff. And by the way, there's supply chain issues still right. that they have to get through. And so, so to have then that liability issue just hanging over their heads, looming there, and, and, and having you know, potential you know, for these frivolous lawsuits, I mean, I have to tell you, Jimmy, it's, it's, it's a real fact. They're basically going in the order of all the priorities of stuff that I've got going on. They're just saying, I, I just hope that it doesn't hit me. But, but again, hope's not a strategy, as we know, and I think we can help these small business owners and take that one thing off their plate. Again, I think, I think we can do this at, 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 a, at a state level, though, mm -hmm. um, and not have to wait for, for, for federal resolution on this one. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I think that this is probably even more the purview of the states anyway than the federal government. But I do understand the, the, the importance of making sure that people understand, hence why I asked you, that 
this wouldn't cover everything. This would be very specific. It would be more narrowly tailored, but it would provide tremendous relief to small businesses. So I'm right there with you on this one, too. That's Alfredo right. Ortiz, President and CEO of the Job Creators Network. Great to talk with you again. Thanks so much for Thank joining you, us today. Absolutely. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Be safe. Thank you. You as well. Stay well, stay healthy, and stay safe. Again, well, Alfredo thanks. Ortiz joining us from the Job Creators Network. And I think they're right on the money on this one in terms of the, the steps of the payroll tax cut at a minimum, those small businesses, but also the limited liability protection makes perfect sense. A lot of businesses are holding back because they're worried about liability issues vis-a-vis COVID-19. <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip of Jimmy at the Crossroads. Don't miss more engaging, intelligent talk. Subscribe today to the Jimmy at the Crossroads YouTube channel. You do not want to miss our live show. Thanks for your support. I got Jimmy at the Crossroads Making sense out of no one No sense Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>